This is what I know about color after studying it for five years. So knowing the theory and the why behind things. So I like to think of it as there's a level of science that you need to know to unlock and build upon your creative side. So at least understand or master the rules before you decide to break them because you need a foundation to use your creative side and then create art and travel the world. And I just personally love color. I think almost every artist does. This is a really exciting topic to dive really deep into because it's where you give life, it's where you give character, it's where you give unique styles to your images. I think there's a lot of science and why and reasoning behind photography and creativity earlier you learn this theory and in the science the quicker you can get into exploring your creative side improving your creative side at least you want to know why it's not looking good at least and then you can start to connect the dots on all this theory proven theory over many many years of these artists these painters these photographers that have used these principles to create art that um, lasts and is timeless this these rules to color that everyone needs to at least understand before they play with it how they like so this video is going to be broken into a few sections we'll go deeper and deeper about understanding color and the roles it plays in uh, photography so how do these colors impact us uh, what certain colors do to people's uh, emotions we have red orange yellow green blue and purple. Red is like a very dangerous or vibrant color. Orange is very happy. Yellow is very bright. Green is very calm nature. Blue is very calming as well. And purple can be, it feels very deep and calming. And then there's black and there's white. So black and white. Black can be kind of luxurious. Same with white can be very luxurious can be a little bit evil feeling where, where white can be more of a vibrant color but i really think all these colors can move the mood so much if you just uh, mute them a little bit or desaturate darken and deep them in terms of luminance or saturation down or up the saturation and up the luminance and you'll get a very different feeling so don't feel constrained by these colors but it does play a role. I think color theory and stuff, the biggest thing is maybe the props and the outfits that are chosen in the shots. So invest in clothing that works in multiple environments and is has pleasing tones. And then if in doubt, go with black and then I or and blue jeans. Whenever you're referring to color, there is hue, saturation, and luminance, and temperature. So hue is the color. So we've got red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. So all the hues make up the color wheel with scarlet, maroon, all these different colors, amber, all in between these colors. But there's a bit of a twist to all this because there's two color wheels. So, so one is RGB and the other is CYM. So RGB is what computers, Lightroom uses, and then CYM is painting, mixing colors, for example. So one of the biggest differences is if you mix all the colors using rgb the computer system you get white colors become brighter until they become white and then if you're painting for example these colors mix them all together you'll get black so there's a bit of a really random twist um, that you have to think about when working with colors but i'll explain why that's not the biggest issue and how to get around that rgb combine all your colors and you'll get white and then as you can see on the crossover of these colors, this is how colors mix. This is how it ends up giving us the ability to create any color we want. So that's why over the last couple of years, I've been really encouraging people to download a color wheel, study the color wheel. So red, green, and blue, and then red, green, and blue gives us the ability to make any color we want. 
So where this can trip you up is red is complementary to green. But if you look at the RGB color wheel, across from red is cyan and not green. So you might not realize re uh, green is complementary to red. But in Lightroom, if you're mixing colors, working, trying to balance colors, create new colors, everything you need to work in Lightroom, you're not going to be working with green and red to balance out. You're going to be working with red and cyan to balance out. For example, in the curves here, you are adding in the color or you are subtracting that color because they are opposite in the RGB color wheel. It's not super, super crucial because uh, cyan is still very, very complementary to red. It's just green is also, there's a lot of leeway when creating compelling color palettes. So how I see it is when you're working in Lightroom, creating the colors, balancing colors, you need to be thinking RGB because that's how you're gonna balance the colors. And then when you're out shooting in the real world or the end result of your edit, you want to be thinking CRM color wheel. So picking colors for the real world, um, CRM because they are complementary, but balancing, working towards those colors, mixing, getting the right color, correcting colors, you is RGB because that's what Lightroom uses. And then the luminance and the saturation is the brightness of that color and as it says saturation so we also have warm and cold colors so i think a lot of people underestimate warmth in your image and the colors you choose so so we're basically just chopping our color wheel in half with blues on the right and warm colors on the left the reason this is so important is because the warm colors hold a lot more visual uh, intenseness energy they really advance forward in the image so anything on the warm side is gonna be much more it appears closer and further and comes out of the image more than the cooler tones a very good technique people do is red in the foreground and then the cooler tones in the background so it doesn't have to be red but any of the warmer tones generally they're very it's very good placing them in the foreground or right by the subject and then letting the cooler tones fall back a lot more visual attention goes towards the warmer colors and that brings us to the next point which is the harmonies and this is the combination of colors which is i think much more important okay so here we are in color.adobe.com so we can play with the color palettes in here as you can see we've got analogous monochromatic triad complementary split complementary and square and compound so analogous is all the colors are on the same side of the color wheel. I really like this one. It's probably one of the easiest ones to do. It's There's a lot of it in nature. My best tip is when you're out shooting and you want to create nice colors, is just very simply wear the color, say your outfit, same as the environment, and you'll quite likely end up with a color palette like this. Uh, I really love monochromatic again if you just wear the same color as the environment you might end up with a color palette like this so yeah so just different shades of the same color okay brightness and then we've got triad so this is so this is a very balanced image and color so so for example this photo i took has very balanced colors because it was sunset a lot of orange person's wearing orange there's a lot of green in the image a lot of blue in the image so complementary orange and teal most common yellow and blue and then we've got green and red and then we've also like i was sort of mentioning before we've got orange and teal but red is still very complementary to teal getting into a yellow uh green i mean uh, split complementary can look really nice as well gives you a little bit of three color split like this is a good example of you do have leeway you can sort of go to a color to the left a color a little to the right um, in terms of balancing making appealing colors square will give you a very balanced look as well so analogous can give you a very 
calming feeling to your photos. It's very, colors aren't competing with each other. Whereas say the complementary color palettes, these are very eye-catchy. There's a lot of contrast of color between the two colors. So it's great for movies, advertisements, when you really want to make a striking image. Same with split complementary. And then uh, square triad is they these will give you a feeling of balance in your image and monochromatic can give a very calming balance of color as well And this looks really nice to know, but it is a little bit more complex to actually play this out in real life into your photos. So maybe in Photoshop, you will just hard change that color into the complementary color if there's solid colors. But a lot of hotels, a lot of architecture, a lot of interior, a lot of places have already done this color palette for you and what's mo most of the time is what it's what's up to the photographer is the outfit and props and but also in street photography you'd want to time these color palettes as well balancing your colors is just as important as the colors you choose so brighter a color is like more chroma in the color which is very eye catchy and intense for the eye where uh, a less saturated darker tone is visual rest or like it's calming to the eye that's how you would pick what sort of saturation you want so balancing your colors not only do you have to have the right type of color the right hue of color to complement other colors but you also it's the amount within that image that will create balance. So generally there's about a 70, 20% and then a 10% or 25% and a 5%. And that split of color gives dominance to one color. And then it is just a nice balance of the last 30% because a 50-50 color split can be very jarring, very harsh, but that's maybe what you're going for. Painters, for example, have it a bit easier because they, they have complete control over their colors. Yo, I'm doing a video on color theory. So red and uh, cyan complementary colors. I don't know what that one's saying either. I don't know. So colors have different intensities depending on their saturation, luminance, and warmth and what they're complementary to. So you have a 60% color 
that is dominant that sort of like sets the scene or frames the image and then you have a 30 percent which is commonly like the subject the content of the photo and then a 10 percent five percent which is called an accent which sort of gives visual rest to the image because if you just got two colors it can be kind of jarring on the eyes it can be intense it just sort of gives visual rest with a nice balance of color so yeah it's got to release that visual tension with just a, a a drop of another color so you don't want the color that is 60 percent of your image to be too dominant and overdo the other colors so you want the main color the most dominant color to be of less saturation or less luminance so it's dimmer it's it has less intensity compared to the next color so the subject or the accent to balance them out if they're of the same intensity they're out of balance so we need to bring down the intensity of the color that makes up about 60 percent and then the accent or the subject has a higher amount of luminosity brightness maybe saturation and then that balances out the other tones so the brightness and luminosity has more visual weight yeah, yeah, yeah so lower saturation visual rest and more chroma more luminosity saturation more intenseness balance those out less there's more visual weight to a brighter saturated image and a calmer lower saturated color comes down the visual and lets the eye guide be directed to those more intense colors or frames the more intense colors patterns is worth mentioning so quite often colors aren't solid if you have the matching kind of pattern to the matching kind of pattern of in your image it doesn't always have to be color but that is also a really nice technique i see So these are obviously not hard set rules you can have two color harmonies going on in the same image if they're balanced right so for example we've got this one here so what we've got is the greens are very not of high luminosity quite lower less intense than the subject here so we've got the complementary colors of all the green setting the scene taking up you know that route that 70 60 majority of the image and then the green is very nicely complemented with uh, the most other obvious color here which is red complementing and then the red is of a higher saturation and luminosity so it, it really really pops from this image and then we've obviously got really nice leading lines down here too but i'd say the green and red is the complementary going on here and then as you can see here we have triad so we've got the balance of red yellow and blue right in where the subject is so a nice balance of color all grouped together right there where the subject is so it's really cool seeing like great composition and photography and then great composition and photography but then also on top of that the use of color on top of that to help composition guide the eye frame just creates a more pleasing looking image and i think sometimes people wouldn't notice this sort of stuff so to try to sum up everything put it all into one image everything we've gone over for your sh for your shots you want to decide whether you want warm or cool tones and then you want what color do you want so maybe you want red and then you want the right complementary colors to work with that with that color so the right harmony and then you want the right saturation luminance intensity of those colors so that you've got the right amount in each of those harmonies the 60 30 10 roughly speaking um, balance of those three colors or the all those colors and then on top of that they are placed in the right area of your image to help compose the image with warm colors at the front of your image or where the subject is and cooler tones where you don't want the eye to go as as much 
So how to practically do this is also just in editing using presets. So presets are intended just to give a little bit of a monochromatic look, a complementary split to balance the image. Obviously we want to shoot with the right colors, but then you can also push them and help those colors come out as like you can push your skin tones to have a bit more red or a bit more yellow and then you can push your greens to, to complement those colors so you can work in Lightroom and just increase what you could do in camera but then take it a bit further with understanding color so you can maximize these color palettes so you're just manually putting them into the environment into the image rather than shooting them whatever the dominant color in the image is bring that out and focus on that color and what will happen if you just focus on adding the right amount of color you'll be surprised how just a small amount of color uh, when you zoom out and look at your feed looks very cohesive really blends your all your images together in a really surprising way it has a really big impact so there's a lot not in your control when you're trying to balance these ca these colors in camera because you can't sometimes change the amount of blue in the sky but so that's why Lightroom is so important work in Lightroom to get these pleasing effects to your images to the visual eye so just how Lightroom works so you can actually use Lightroom and then you have to understand color and then you actually have to understand these uh, harmonies and how to balance color what makes color look balanced what makes it looks nice for example lots of warmth and then just a little bit of teal it's almost monochromatic but then you've got that hint of that 10% uh, color just a light teal and it really uh, makes that image look very much more balanced so in this video we've covered a lot of theory background but there is so much more to it in terms of practically how do you actually do it how do you get these color palettes that look natural pick colors remove colors blend colors so that's what i've been teaching the last couple of years along with a hundred other photographers breaking down the colors like so many of them are using color in a very different way so you want to use shooting and editing in combination with each other to achieve the style and look you want so i've done another breakdown on color but more related to lightroom so you guys can go check that one out let's just sign up and it's for free about color and the curves related to lightroom and not so much shooting like we have in this one and then that way you can slowly work your way towards getting your own style so yeah that's it for this one and i will catch you in the next one